All right, guys, today we're going to be diving in the wonderful world of solos. Now, look, I'm a huge fan of duos, trios, and quads more than solos per se when it comes to learning. However, we're saying that you've got to learn to take care of yourself before you can take care of your teammates. Because if you're playing with a squad and you can't solo by yourself, you're putting your squad at a massive disadvantage. So we're going to be diving into the uh, tips and tricks of that, discussing things you guys need to be doing to get better for yourself. That way, not only in solos, but duos, trees, and quads. That way you guys can move on to solidifying more wins, more kills, and increasing those stats that are yet to exist. He looked like he was AFK for a second, I'm not going to lie. I normally don't play standing up, but first time for everything, all right? Teammates, crack, get him. Now look, you guys want to get better at pistol shots? You guys have got, and I mean have got to practice sniping. Let's talk about the gulag real quick because pistols is 99% of your gulags right now. So a lot of people come to the stream, they're like, Savage, like how are you so good at your pistol shots? And I honestly relate that and correlate it to sniping. A lot of players get better at sniping from utilizing pistols, but if you guys aren't out there practicing with pistols a lot, um, and I'm not talking about the Akimbo Autos X13s, those don't count, but like, individual shots where you have to land your headies, you have to actually hit your targets for the flicks and the accuracy. I always like to prefer sniping, uh, recommend sniping for you guys to get out there, get more aggressive, and be a lot better with pistols. And to be 100% honest, I'm so glad the Ghoulie is pistols um, and even shotguns. Once they started adding ARs and SMGs and LMGs, it just kind of took away from the uh, experience of the Gulag. Oh my God, I did not think that through. It took away the experience of the Gulag in Warzone 1, and honestly, it took away the uh, skill as well. So if you guys want to improve at your pistol gameplay, I highly recommend just whipping out some snipers. You don't have to snipe all the time, and I know sniping in this game isn't the greatest. There are some really good snipers, though. Look at this man. He's just living his best life, dude. Winnie the motherfucking poo. Look at this, dude. Look at him. All right, so we talked about that. Now let's discuss solo. So there are a lot of tips I want to give you guys, not just as solo players. When, when you guys are spectating, when we're spectating solos, this is not only for solo players. The purpose of me spectating solos, I'm going to be doing it a lot more here on this on this channel, is because in order to be good at duos, trios, and quads, especially in Warzone 2, you got to be able to handle your own. You've got to be able to handle your own, dude. If, if you can't play solos, if you can't solo a fight, what in the f what are you doing you are so motherfucking cracked out on so much different shit right now i don't even know if you know what you're doing he just dove himself right into the middle of ai central anyway um being a good solo player directly again correlates to being a good duo streams quad player I'm very lost right now. Uh, tip number one for this video, guys. Have a plan of action and pay attention what the fuck you're doing. He literally is just aimlessly running. He's having fun. You can see it. He's aimlessly running around. He's diving. Um, he has no reason to be here, though, at all. There are zero objectives. Also, um, Infinity Ward, can we add some more objectives to this damn game? There ain't no reason for this. What do we have? 15 on the entire map? Come on, man. Um, but there's no objectives here. Where you guys want to loot, that's fine. I know, so, you know, gas stations and they have stashes and this and that. I get that. But again, I'd rather land at a big area like all Mazra City. That way, you can get a lot of fuck, you can get a fuck ton of money and then you can move on by and then you can go back to getting a, a lot of money. Not to mention a lot of fights there. Um, Passive drops aren't the worst case scenario, especially if you're a win grinder. You know, a lot of you guys want to just go ahead and solidify a bunch of wins. But again, right now, stats don't matter. So let's tip number two this video. Stats don't matter. So I highly encourage all players right now to stop trying to win. I haven't been trying to win since I found out as well. Um, just fight, get, get fights done. You've got to get your reps in. And we said this in Warzone 1. We saw how crazy the skill gap was in Warzone 1 compared from, from from goats to bot players. And why was that? Well, goat players always dropped Superstore and Verdansk, always. And then they dropped Peak and Caldera. 
bot players they might get a wild hair up their ass once in a while and drop there but for the most part they drop somewhere like this which again isn't a bad strat to win but if you're not getting the reps in the fight when it comes down to actually getting a gunfight with the with the winning strategy of rotating maintaining the high ground you're gonna lose most of the time you might get lucky but you're gonna lose so until stats actually matter i highly encourage you to take advantage of this situation a lot of people look at the the leaderboards not being in and, and combat records not being as a bad thing but you got to look at it as like a blessing because this is the time you get to f off and literally practice everything this is this is that this is that trial moment this is basically a beta we get to play and master the mechanics master the guns figure out what our strategy is going to be you know do we want to be ranged players do we want to be close range players do we want to be medium range players what kind of player do you want to be you need to identify that i think so many people get lost in the sense of what, what are we doing god you're making my head hurt my guy okay now he's just fucking with me i'm gonna bet i'm gonna bet you guys right now the moment we get in a fight he's gonna get absolutely destroyed absolutely destroyed A whole lot of a lot of things for a whole lot of nothing dude look at us now all right so where do we go well we're on the edge of the zone there's really no gatekeep here there might be someone here but it, it's not even worth my time to find out if there is or not so i would rotate again to the bigger section this is where most of the fight's going to be at you're gonna have a lot of people um over here at octar village as well so again just rotate and also one of the benefits to us goats i don't want to call myself a goat because i'm not one of the benefits to us players that had above a 2kd the reason why we were able to navigate the map and drop 20 30 40 kills is because we knew exactly where players would be at well as a player how do you find out where players like to be you got to move your feet you got you got to rotate you got to say okay well shit i go to salad city all the time and there's never anyone there so if that's the case nine times out of ten guess what avoid Say saeed city if that makes any damn sense at all basically i want you guys again to not only go out there and fight but i want you guys to navigate the map and learn where players like to be at all right well we did get precisioned and here we are we see a player i don't like the cluster play because all they have to do is run sideways that's a, that's a massive waste and with the enemy standing perfectly still and the fact that we had the attack we should have just shot this dude in the head would we have killed him maybe not but we could have cracked his armor wasted the little plates he has made him run anyway and again pushed up while he's plating i have no idea what Winnie the Pooh's doing? And you know, I'm not going to make fun of him for trying to have cracked out movement again, dude. A lot of people just want to play how they want to play. That's fine, but <laughs> I'd like to see him back it up. And he might be able to. You got a sniper glint in the tower. He has no idea. He had no idea. FOV is not an excuse anymore, guys. Oh, shit. Where'd he come from? If only I knew. You got to pay attention. Tip number three, guys. Be observant. Now, look. Glint's, you know... It's hard sometimes to see glints, but it's way easier in this this game than it was in Warzone 1 um, during the Caldera days. For dance days, yeah, it was easy as shit. But I mean, notice the glint right there, right? We saw it through the tree. So the glints are a lot louder now, which hinders a lot of snipers. But at the same time, it requires a sniper to be a lot more skillful. I'll be honest, as a sniper, I really don't mind the two-hit kill. I don't. It requires me to be a lot more skillful. I got an ADS faster, so it didn't see my glint. I gotta line it up, ADS to shoot, and I gotta hit another shot back to back. I think it requires a lot more skill to hit sniper shots nowadays than it did back in Warzone 1. But again, on the flip side, there's a huge disadvantage to the glint, so you gotta be quick, which is why if you're a sniper out there, I'm just gonna give you guys a side tip. Get a, get a sniper that ADS is fast as fuck. You saw him rotate to the left, there he is. Easy shots, why, why are we hesitating? There, there had to have been like a nice second and a half. He just stared at him with his, with his reticle lined up on the enemy. He just didn't shoot. I don't know why. We can get to the rooftop, get the high ground. There we go. That's where I would have gotten originally, to be 100% honest. You see it? You saw his head moving on the back. He's probably rotating back and forth inside, outside. Keep your eyes on the building. I like that we're scanning, just making sure no one's going to third party us. But because of that third party situation, again, we should we should take care of this fight fast as fuck. Oh, that's that's unfortunate brother yeah you, you screwed yourself on that one there he's in the back yep and again the hesitation lack of aim lack of recoil control and the fact that he was too distracted with whatever the hell he was i'm adhd as a mother 
and I know this dude clearly is by what I'm seeing and still you can you can kind of grab that shit under control there's no reason we shouldn't have killed this guy for the first time we shot at him, but we wasted the cluster. There's no reason we didn't know he was in that tower. We could have pushed him, but again, he wasn't paying attention. And also, this fight here, instead of keeping your eyes on the prize and watching the enemy, we allowed him to run off in the distance, and now he got away. Now, that's a huge mistake. He made three mistakes in this one fight with one player. And I told you guys, there's yeah, not open. Come on, man. And I told you guys, I bet y'all that he was gonna he was gonna miss all his shots and sure enough he is he's still in a really good position but it, he needs to be pushing the gap instead he's playing this ridge and i don't mind playing ridges but when the enemy's running from you and separating his distance and you're actively chasing him you've got to do something so the fight has technically happened four different times now and we have yet to capitalize on the kill despite the cracked out movement which really isn't really that useful in this game he hasn't produced much of anything. Big mistake on the enemy right there. Big mistake on the enemy. Um, let me just get us in the perspective of the enemy for a second. So if you're the enemy and you're being shot at by us, when you're running, if you know he's missing a lot of shots, just quickly peek back real quick while you're getting shot at. <laughs> Bait and switch, bro. Peek back real quick and then continue running. It doesn't take much doesn't take but a split second um and what that does is it gives you intel of where he's at you see his tracers you see the body and now you know he didn't pay any attention at all and he had no idea where you're at and he almost died because of it but baby duck was able to go ahead and solidify that beautiful bait and switch and here we are moving on and again dude the longer these fights take the more time you're giving enemies to outplay you, outthink you, get to a better spot. And on top of that, despite this guy, not even to mention this guy, the more opportunities other players have the third party because they hear your, gu your gunshots. Straight up. Now, we got to pay attention. There's a cluster going on next to us as well, and we're not even looking. I want to get eyes on this cluster and see what the hell's going on. Who's shooting who? Who's blowing shit up? You could catch somebody easily rotating. There they are on the left. Again, FOV's not an issue. So many times people say, Savage, but Savage, I can't ever see because of FOV. No, you can't see because you're not paying attention. He's not paying attention. There's no reason for him not to see that guy up there. And again, I don't even know if he saw the cluster because again, not paying attention to the minimap. I said this, a lot of people said this, and not all of y'all are guilty, but we said that when FOV becomes a thing for everybody, guess what? Players will still be blind to obvious things. And I think about 50% of console players that didn't have that luxury before are still not paying attention. So you've got to look for movement. So many people look for like bodies and tracers and gunshots and that's not a thing at all. We got him falling in right here. We didn't see him. I'm not sure why we keep going crouch. You know, there are situations in gunfights we want to peek up and crouch for sure or prone. I get that. But uh, until we're being shot at, I don't want to because every time we go crouch, it gives the enemy options to run to the left, run to the right, and we won't be able to see him in that split second. It doesn't take long for an enemy to rotate as well. Oh, we do have a Betty in there too. On top of the roof. Bro! And Reaction time is poor. Observation is poor, snapping is poor, aim and accuracy are poor. Now, how do you, how do you speed that up? You got to get in fights. We've only got three kills with 38 left. We clearly have not gotten a lot of fights. And again, look at where on the map we are, right? We're not going to get many fights down here. If you want to get more wins, guys, you got to get more competent in your gunfights. I don't care how many times you die. If you watch my live streams, we full send everything and I die a lot. I die a lot. We can go on win streaks if that's our goal. We can win seven, eight, nine win streaks in a row. Or if we're gonna be hunting down kills, I could go a whole day without a win. You just gotta figure out what do you wanna do. And I, I, I'm gonna shove this down your throats for the next few weeks. Go for fights. Please practice your aim. Multiplayer is cool for sure. But again, movement's a little different than it is in multiplayer for some odd fucking reason. Um, Damage and everything is different, so you've got to, you've got to practice your headshots to get those armor plates broken faster, get the enemy killed faster. Because even though TTK is fast as fuck in this mode, it's still a lot different than multiplayer. The enemy should have had us. He was, yeah, we were one tap, bro. There's no reason.
Now look, we're running, we're continuing to run, and I like that, but this building right here, this is my gatekeep spot. And that's exactly where he's going. It'll go up top, bro. If you're gonna gatekeep, you better grab the high ground, dude. We should have gotten up top on the rooftop and just easily held the enemy. And now we're inside the building, blinding ourselves from what could be an easy kill. The enemy can rotate left, he can rotate right, he can shit, he shit, he can grab the high ground and reverse us. Play Uno with this bitch. Oh no, he's too distracted, dude. He's panicking right now, and he really shouldn't be again. He has the best spot. We need to get this kill. <laughs> we need to get this kill before we push across. He can't make up of his mind if he wants to get the high ground or not. And he's gonna, I think he's gonna pay the price for this. We've allowed the enemy now to safely push the buildings that I thought we should gatekeep at and look at our position. So now we're gonna have to run out in the open and there's a good shot. We There's a good chance we get shot. I have no idea where the hell this enemy went. He might've just said, screw that and rotated to these buildings. So we got lucky in that fight. Oh, here comes a vehicle. Oh, he sees us and we don't have any idea. We're still looting, we're still looting, we're still looting. What are we doing? What are we doing? All right, let's talk about rotations. So again, you know, the objective is to win and I want you guys to go for kills, but it, even if your idea is to get kills, like I'm gonna listen to Savage, I'm gonna go for kill, kill, kill. Whenever you get down to like this size zone, this is when you can kind of slow it down and start playing for the win because you only have 25 enemies left. Going for kills is 100% gonna guarantee you to die. Um, so this is where I would start saying, where do I wanna be as far as rotations are concerned? So forget the rest of the circle. Let's look at this one. The moment this circle identifies, everybody up here needs to instantly start moving. We, they have 30 seconds before the circle forces them out allowing other players that are already down south to rotate to these buildings and start getting their gatekeep positions to gatekeep us, to gatekeep other enemies. You're gonna see a lot of players die. I think we're gonna be down to like almost single digits when this zone closes in because of how many people are gonna be coming from the obs observatory and Octar village. So right now we need to be rotating. Where would you go? Well, these are some two-story buildings I like. The gas station, not so much. It's center zone-ish. Everyone's gonna be trying to get that spot because everyone thinks getting center zone is a good idea and it really is not. Um, so I would be grabbing these buildings or these buildings. Now, there's really no better decision. I would grab these because we're on this side already. But even if you get this side, the circle could favor the opposite or the circle could favor us. It's a 50-50 shot. But we are taking our sweet ass time. So not only do we have to worry about gatekeeping or people gatekeeping us, but we also have to worry about people rotating in with us. So I have a feeling it's gonna get wild for your boy. Granted, it depends on the lobby, depends on how skilled the players are in the lobby. Everyone might be hiding. We spectated a solo game the other day where literally a guy was running in the open. There are only three enemies left. He had no cover, no concealment at all, and enemies weren't even peeking. They were just hiding on the rooftops. So if you are in a gatekeep spot, again, you want to peek. Even if, oh my God, what are we doing, brother? Not a good spot. Indecisiveness is going to get you killed, brother. We've got gunshots going off to our left, up to our right. Reload that gun. We got lucky. We went to a corner. Enemy fell for it. And we're not going to execute him. And again, I don't mind him not executing just because there are enemies over here. But because we made that noise, this guy's going to sell for us. The other enemies here hurt us. It's going to be rough. Now, I did tell y'all not to grab the ga gas station. I did circle favorite gas station but again i still stand by what i said get to the better buildings it's just unfortunate it went here so whatever team grabbed it is going to benefit greatly from it You're nearly done. now look how many fights are going on the edge of the zone right now we're down to 10 players now that the zone has enclosed it's about to get rough oh we got a sniper glint you are ballsy for challenging this bro not everyone's a bad sniper you are ballsy now i do like the ridge we have Instead of forcing itself over to gas station, playing this ridge does two things for us. One, we're not trapped in a building where we have to lie on windows to peek and see an enemy. We have a ridge, that's way better. Two, everyone's gonna be fighting over here. You see it right now, you hear the gunshots, you see the vehicles, everyone's gonna be over there. There's a 99% chance we're the only squad on this side of the street. So two things, one, if the circle favors us and rotates our way, awesome. Two, if it doesn't, and it, even if it circles, the circle favors this way, they're gonna be so distracted with each other, we can easily sneak across. I wish he had smoke grenades, which would make it a lot easier. 
Now look, we have a zone. How do you rotate this? I'm gonna rotate the least the past the path of least resistance. So instead of rotating long, I'm gonna wide rotate. That way I have a less, you know, less area to cross. I'd like for him to peek this though. I want to see what that looks like. And that's why I didn't want to cross a long area. I wanted to cross, I wanted to wide rotate across the short because there's gonna be a lot of people here. If the longer distance you take to cross the open, the more vulnerable you, vulnerable you are because other enemies will be able to shoot you. Think about it this way. If it takes you 30 seconds to get to the next piece of cover, that's 30 seconds you're vulnerable. If it takes you three seconds to cross, that's three seconds you're vulnerable. Which one would you rather? And again, if he would have just wide rotated, these guys would have been all distracted with each other. There'd be four players left if he was still alive and these two guys would be distracted by this vehicle. I really wish, and I don't know why it's so difficult for Ravensoft and Activision to figure this out, because we said it in Warzone 1, we said it in Blackout. They took out the big helicopter because they got to figure it out. How about you just disable vehicles the last two circles? I like the idea of using vehicles to tactically position yourself, but players don't do that shit. They just drive in circles, talking their fucking horn like it's Fortnite. Make sure you think the bus driver. So the guy in the vehicle is going to win. Your boy's got one kill. There's really not much we can do. He can just drive around. Now, if you are in this position, what do you do? You shoot the enemy. You got to destroy the vehicle. You got to weaken it down. The, oh, whoa. The longer it takes for you to destroy the vehicle, the better option he has to kill you. Shoot him with an AR, brother. I, I get you want to snipe him. Oh, yeah, you're dead. GG. Oh, I mean, dude, again, it's not. First off, Ravensoft is not rocket science. Disable vehicles last two zones. It's as simple as that. Or maybe the last zone. Once it closed down on that, <laughs> stump your dick. Once it closed down on that gas station, that's when vehicles should just get EMP. There should be an EMP that goes off on the map. All vehicles get disabled. That'd be the best way to do it in my opinion. But two, again, if you are facing that situation, you have got to put bullets on the vehicle. You have to. Even if there's four enemies left, guys, shoot. A lot of people are like, well, I don't want to shoot the vehicle because I don't want to reveal my position. Well, if you're in a bad spot, like if you're on, on the other side of the street, if you're in a bad spot, don't shoot the vehicle clearly. But if you're by the gas station with cover and concealment, who cares if they know where you're at? They probably know where you're at anyway because you just killed a guy. Shoot the damn vehicle. Not the sniper with an AR. It's going to take a lot. I get it. But shoot the damn vehicle. Also, try your best in game to hold on to stickies if you can for that. Vehicles have been an issue in all of Call of Duty Battle Royales. Blackout, it was bad. Warzone 1, it was bad, clearly with the Berthas. And now we have this. Pre-plan for the worst case scenarios. You can't always help it. Sometimes you gotta use nades to kill an enemy. I get that. But make sure you try your best to hold on to something. Munitions, stickies, thermite, something to help yourself in a spot like that, especially in solos. Duo trails and quads, you don't see vehicle usage that much, especially in quads, because you can blow down a vehicle with one squad and with a magazine or two in each. But solos, it takes so much more bullets for one person to hit. Make sure you try your best to hold on to your lethals and make sure you carry lethals that can actually stick to a vehicle. Again, Simtex and Thermite. But again, guys, look, to be a better player, you've got to focus on yourself. Don't blame the game. Don't blame anything else. At the end of the day, there's a lot of issues in this game. I get it. But when it comes to winning more consistently, what do you got to do? You gotta work on your aim. You gotta work on your accuracy. You gotta work on your strategy. You gotta work on decision-making, knowing when and where to push, knowing how to rotate, playing high ground. There are so many pieces to the puzzle you're not gonna get if you're just focused on only winning. And because stats don't matter, who cares how many wins you have? Who cares? So please guys, if you're a new player, if you're an intermediate player, shit, if you're an advanced player out there struggling with this game when you had a 3KD in Warzone, practice, get out there, forget stats, play reckless. I always said it in Warzone 1. Having a leaderboard, having stats was hindering a lot of players gameplay because they were like, well, I want to get a 1KD. I want to get a 2KD. So they would camp. They would get three kills and die once. And now I got a 3KD. It's not how you want to play. It's not how you want to play at all. You don't have to be as aggressive in this game, but you want to go out there and try to be competent and confident with your gunplay. But guys, again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck out there. This game is a, it's a struggle for not only you guys, it's a struggle for me, it's a struggle for everybody. We're all learning, we're all adapting. The only people right now that are thriving are wind grinders. And again, a lot of us don't enjoy wind grinding. If you're one of those guys as well, you understand what I'm saying. But even if you wanna wind grind, look at the wind grinders. What can they do? They can shoot their guns, they can aim. So make sure you get to that level before you focus on wind grinding. But guys, until next time, man, y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone.